Bye Chanel. See you later. Hi, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today I'm going to be sharing with you why I will no longer be purchasing Chanel moving forward. I actually filmed this video, I'm not quite sure when, some point this year and I um, never uploaded it to YouTube and I deleted it. And I just said, you know, give yourself a few months, see how you're feeling and I still feel the same way. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you. Before I get into any of that, I want to say, if you want a Chanel bag, I highly suggest you get it and you get it soon because they're gonna keep going up, up, up in price. I have my um, jumbo here and I have my medium here. And I've said this several times and I will say it again. I am not going to say that I would not purchase these at today's current price uh, if I didn't already own them. I own them and there is no way I would pay today's current price, but if these were not in my possession, I'm honestly not sure. I don't think I would, but if you want to, then you need to do what's right for you. Um, so I'm gonna explain a little bit of my backstory with Chanel, how I feel about them now and why I won't be moving forward with them. And then I am going to share my entire Chanel collection with you. It is very small. I do not do collection uh, videos anymore, um, but this, it's so small. So I'm just gonna share that with you. So I started buying Chanel 10 years ago. Um, my first purchase was called the Timeless Tote. And if I can find a picture of it, I will insert it. It was such a poorly made bag. Why I continued on with the brand, I honestly can't tell you. It was so poorly made. It was my most expensive bag at the time. I cannot remember what it cost. I think it was like $3,100, $3,200. And it just like, there was almost like cardboard in the, the front and the back of it. And it kind of started to warp after just a few uses it wasn't used daily um, sold that one pretty quickly and purchased two GSTs those were really really good quality um, sold those just because they were just I wasn't into totes anymore they were too big too boxy um, purchased two wallet on a chains they're just not for me I've also tried one from Gucci they're just too small sold those and then I got into my classic flaps, and I'll show you I got a bag before my classic flap. But I went back and forth debating if I wanted to get the medium or the jumbo. And I was very lucky that it took me a couple of years to decide actually, um, but the prices did not change. So this one was $5,500 at the time. This one was $4,800 at the time. And I've had them both five years now. These I feel are very, very well made. And I think that um, they're absolutely beautiful. These currently, the jumbo is $9,500 and the medium is $8,800. And again, since they are in my hands, I am going to say unequivocally, I will never purchase another classic flap again. I will not do it, especially the jumbo. I will not spend over $10,000 on a Chanel bag. It's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. But if I didn't have them, I'm not sure how I would feel about that. So throughout the pandemic, all of us have just learned different things about ourselves, changed a lot of what we do because we weren't going anywhere for a long time. Um, I noticed that in 2020, this had been one of my most used bags since I purchased it. And I noticed in 2020, I didn't use it very much. Same with this one, same with all of my Chanel bags. And I was like, you know, I kept chalking it up to the pandemic. Well, we're into 2022. We are well into April. I still, I haven't used these bags all year long. Uh, there's one Chanel bag I have used this year and I will um, show you that one in a moment. I haven't carried them. I haven't reached for them. I went two full years without making a single purchase from Chanel and uh, my last purchase had been the Chanel Boy bag 
which I bought for $5,000 and it is currently $5,900. So two whole years went by and there was just absolutely nothing that interested me at Chanel. And I decided, and I don't know why, but I decided I needed a small cocoa handle flap. I don't know why, I just decided I did. <laughs> and I bought the most beautiful one ever. I still think this bag is gorgeous. I'm sure I have a picture of it somewhere and I will insert a picture of it. I bought the Chevron uh, So Black. Gorgeous, it just didn't work out for me. The strap is a little bit too long for shoulder. It is too short for crossbody. It is just slightly shy of fitting my essentials that I need to carry and it just didn't work out for me and I kept thinking it's the color. It's black. It's because all my whole Chanel collection is black and it's you don't reach for black bags anymore. It's black. That wasn't it because I tried again in the spring and um, or when did, I don't, I don't even remember, <laughs> but I bought, yes, before Valentine's Day, because I ended up with my Alma BB, which was a fraction of the price, fits everything that I need, and I absolutely love it, but I tried buying a light pink one. So when I purchased the So Black, those are three to four hundred dollars more than the regular ones. I don't remember exactly, but at the time, that one was five thousand one hundred, plus my almost ten percent tax here. They had a price rise, and the, uh, just the regular versions were 5,000 at that time. It came with, it was either glue or something, but there were little black specks just absolutely all over the bag. And I just started thinking, when on earth did $5,000 just become like the norm to spend on a handbag? And all of their bags that I own have some kind of a little flaw that bothers me. <laughs> the older I get, the longer I've been buying, the pickier I am. So when I show you the whole collection, I will go through what kind of annoys me about each of the bags. And I was just like, started thinking, are we just buying these because they slap two CCs on them? Are we buying these because it says Chanel on the front really big? Are we buying these because they're really practical and we love them? Or are we buying them because it says Chanel? And I really, really started thinking about that. And I think because it says Chanel in a lot of cases, because the reason I was debating between these two, I'll go ahead and share the flaws on both of these since they are sitting out here. And uh, I'll show you these two first. But the reason I debated so hard upon these two this one at the time I liked the size better because I was still carrying full size wallets, larger sunglasses, things like that. It fit really good. Um, but it's really heavy. It's extremely, extremely heavy and I have barely ever used it in the five years that I've had it. It is absolutely in pristine condition. And somebody said to me in a video, you know, why don't you let it go? You just have money sitting on your shelf. That is something that I say, and I say that a lot. This one has a lot of sentimental reasons for keeping it, but I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just, it's, I don't know. I, I need to really sit down, go through my entire collection, and determine if there's things that I want to let go with a vlog sale. Right now, I just don't have the time, and it's just not where my brain is at. So in the medium one, the flaw with this was that it's just slightly too small, slightly too small, and I don't like the strap drop. It's a little too short. Now, back when I purchased it five years ago, I actually preferred this uh, strap drop to that one. I thought that one was a con because, as you'll notice, like the Prada reissues that are coming back, shoulder straps were very short, and you know this one's very long. This is more of a classic, I think, length than perhaps this one is, but it was just like a little bit too small, wasn't going to fit exactly what I needed. I, you know, I don't know. I just went back and forth and back and forth, but they were like the ultimate quintessential classic bags. These were my dream bags. I do not use the word holy grail bag. I've never used that word, but these were my dream bags and I was super excited to own them. And I think I would be super scared to let them go with the current prices. Um, 
But yes, I just like, at what point? Like, that was my most expensive bag. Yes, I have Hermes bags that cost more, but you can't really get in at Chanel anymore for under 5K. Now, the Deauville, which is a fabric bag, I have one in leather, which I'll show you in a moment. I'll put a picture of that up. It is $3,900, and the only picture I could find on their website is a white one. I mean, so like close to $4,500 with tax, and it's white, and it's fabric. I think the Deauville's beautiful. But I'm starting to just find their designs boring. <laughs> it's just the same exact bag over and over again. No matter what color you pop on it, if it's pink, if it's turquoise, I mean, they do have a gorgeous array of colors, but... I don't know if I'm just so saturated by social media or if it's because I personally have owned them for so long, but I honestly only find one of my Chanel bags to, to, to not be like really boring. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm over it. So I'm saying goodbye to Chanel. <laughs> so I'm gonna share with you my collection now. I'd like to know your thoughts. Are you still like super happy and excited when they have new collections come out? I, in general, with, there's not really any fashion house that I follow actively to see what the new stuff is because I, in general, don't care. <laughs> and it also saves you a whole lot of money not knowing what's coming out because sometimes you'll see something coming out and you're like, oh, wow, that was, you know, wow, that's cute. Which is, you know, if you weren't actively looking for a bag, then you wouldn't know. But so I'd like to know how you're feeling about it. I did a video recently on my most, um, what, <laughs> I'm blanking out, my most user-friendly bags. And not one single Chanel bag made that list. And I'm getting to a point where it's like, I want a bag to fit what I want it to fit. I want it to be comfortable. I want it to, you know, have multiple ways of wearing it. I want it to bring me joy whenever I look at it. And I want to use it. I mean, I need to use these things. They're, they are just things and they're sitting around gathering dust. <laughs> so let me grab the rest of my collection and I'll share that with you. Okay, so actually, I was incorrect. My first Chanel purchase was more than a decade ago. Um, I got this a year before I got any handbags. And this is my J12. And zero regrets on this watch. I am so tempted to get a white one. I love it so much. I'm actually looking at them pre-loved. Women's watches in general do not hold their value and the Chanel ones, forget it, they don't hold their value at all. But a watch is something that I would keep, um, you know, I don't sell my watches. So this has held up beautifully. Absolutely love this, really, really recommend this. I have three pieces of costume jewelry and I hear people say all the time like, oh, the Cartier, um, the love cuffs are so overdone or, they're everywhere with different like Van Cleef pieces. I feel the opposite. I feel this way about Chanel costume jewelry. I cannot watch an episode of The Housewives without them just stacking on thousands and thousands of dollars of costume jewelry. I absolutely never wear these pieces. I've worn these earrings, I don't know, less than five times. If it's five times, I'd be utterly shocked. I know it's less. They are just the plain, simple, crystal cc studs and they're cute i just i don't wear them i don't i just don't i don't know why i don't wear them and i have two brooches and again i don't wear them either this one i think is really cool because i love anything that is celestial and i haven't reached for this in a couple of years it's really pretty with the moon and the pearls around it and the star and then there's two little cc's right there by the moon. It's just gorgeous. Again, don't wear it. I'm not a brooch person. I try to be, and I try to put it on, and I just, I don't. Or I'll put it on, and my husband's like, you look like you're headed out to sell a house right now. You look a little, you know, like, suited up. <laughs> this is my uh, third one, and there's nothing wrong with going out and selling a house and looking suited up, but it's just not my style, is what he's trying to say. And this is just the leather interwoven with the Chanel. So that is it for the costume jewelry. I have three small leather goods. 
I've really, really downsized Chanel collection. I used to have so many small leather goods, just a rainbow. Um, my two oldest small leather goods, both are from Rue Cambon in um, Paris, and they are in lambskin leather, and they have the camellia pattern with the five on it. Just a little compact wallet here, and love that. And then I got a card holder. Uh, actually, I got this one at Heathrow on the same trip, though, and it's part of that same collection. Just a really pretty, pretty pop of color. But even if this color, let's say that I had this bag in this color, I would find it a little less boring, but I don't know, still boring. I, I, I don't, and I also wouldn't want to spend that much money on a bright, I love this color, and I there is a bag I want in this color, and I might get it, I might not, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to spend that much money on a fun color. That's just, that's why they're all black. <laughs> and the last small leather good that I have is, um, I think it's called the Snap Card Holder. This one has a little back pocket. It has a little front slit and then it opens up real big there. And I like this a lot. It's really, really handy. I have two pairs of sunglasses and get these out. So I only have one in the big case, but this was my first pair. They're like in a tortoise kind of color and they got mother of pearl CCs there on the side. Really, really big and oversized for you. They're like huge, good eye coverage. Help prevent those wrinkles, right? <laughs> and the other pair, I have worn this pair a lot more than that pair just because they're smaller and I usually keep them in a soft pouch and they're easier to get in and out of a handbag. This side just has a pattern on it and one little CC right there. Try these on for you. But that's it for the sunglasses. I don't have a big sunglass collection. Um, I've started having to wear prescriptions, so I've stopped buying designer ones. I know I can have my prescription put in that, but I don't. So the other bags, I have them down here. I'm just going to bend down and get them. So the one that I bought two years ago is the Chanel Boy. And as I said, I got this one for $5,000. This is in the caviar with the ruthenium, which is actually one of the hardest combinations to come by. It does not come out every season. I don't know why, but it's very hard to get. I think it's beautiful. The flaw with this bag is although it looks like it's adjustable, it's not. And I would really prefer it for me crossbody to be just a little bit longer, just a little bit longer. I do like that you can just, you know, pull it and make it into a shoulder bag. And I do think it's edgy and a little bit different from just the classic flaps, but it could be just a little bit longer. Let's scoot this over, have some extra candy. My favorite Chanel bag is the Rock and Rome. This one I've had more than five years because I had this before getting, I am sorry, but my hair is all over the place today. I got this before I got my um, classic flaps. What annoys me about this particular bag is where the, um, let's see if I can get it for you, show you where these grommets are. I can pull it through to show you a little bit better. The grommets, not showing you at all. <laughs> See the grommets, little circles there on the side. You have to twist this or the chain will not lay correctly. So currently it's messed up on this side. So you have to sit it down, twist it, twist the top, make sure that both sides, there we go, and then it works. So it's a little bit fussy in that regard. Um, this is super lightweight. I like the capacity of this one a lot. It's got the three compartments in it, kind of like a pochette Matisse. And this is one of my favorites. Um, I like the ruthenium. I think it makes it just a more casual type of bag. Put this back. And then I have one left. Told you it was a very small collection. So this is the one that I think is the most fun and the coolest looking, and this is also my newest one, and it is my Chanel Deauville. 
and would I have spent this kind of money if it didn't have Chanel emblazoned across it or two C's? And the answer is no. So I have to say, you know, uh, myself too. Yes, I mean, 100%. So as I told you, the fabric one is $3,900. They have a leather one out, which I actually, I actually do think that one's really cute, but it is $6,600. No, I paid around, it was either 4,000 or 4,200 for this one. I knew that they were gonna keep going up and that the fabric ones would eventually cost more than this one. And I like that it has feet on the bottom. It does have organization inside. It has, oh, I just dumped a bunch of stuff off my desk. <laughs> it has two um, slit um, side zippers on either side. I do have my organizer in there. I like that you can do handheld or that you can do the um, straps. The thing with this one, I bought this one to use for air travel. And I took it, and the problem was, it, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a problem perhaps if I didn't have an injury at the time. I had a knee injury. And because this is so tall and it is so stiff, I think the fabric one would go under the seat much easier. I could get it under the seat enough to where it complied with, you know, the under the seat rule. <laughs> but I could not stretch my legs out and I had my right knee had I done something to it and it was really painful flying for that long um, we had one flight where nobody sat in between us so as soon as we took off I moved the bag there so I could stretch my legs out but I did not bring this one to California my last flight um, for that reason so if my knee is okay I will probably fly with this one again but that's what I wanted it for and it's not as, as user friendly under the plane as like say a long shop because it is a very stiff leather and um, I just I wouldn't put a fabric one myself underneath of you know the seat because ick very ick <laughs> so that is my entire Chanel collection and that is just how I'm, I'm feeling about Chanel and luxury in general these days is kind of boring me. There's so many brands that I feel like they're either doing stuff that's so wild and crazy that it's going to look dated so soon, or it's just so boring and the same bag again and again and again in another color. So I don't know. Maybe I have just been buying handbags too long. <laughs> so I hope you have an amazing day today, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.